we have here Shane Zisman. Give him a hand, please. Thank you. What we'll be doing is we'll be looking at his, his brain waves in real time and we'll see them during eyes open, during eyes closed, and then during transcendental meditation practice. So that is Shane's brain. Now his, his brain isn't in Technicolor. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, Shane. <laughs> Here's the front of the brain. Here's the back of the brain. Um, what we'll do is we'll actually look at a single sensor in the front and we'll see what's happening just in this part of the brain. This is a one second here. There's about eight seconds on this screen. This moving line is what's happening right at this moment. This is what the brain looks like when you're looking out at 700 people looking at you. <laughs> what's happening is this very fast activity here. This is the brain taking all of the shapes of your heads and the colors of your clothes and the lights and trying to make a whole picture of it. We'll look at the back part of the brain now so we can have some perspective. Here's the back part of the brain. The key point is notice that these signals are quite different. This one is going up with one rhythm. This one is going up and down with another rhythm. What we'll ask Shane to do now is just close the eyes and we'll see how the brain waves change. And close the eyes. I'll just stop it for a moment. So the main thing I want you to notice is this type of activity is beginning to be seen here. This rhythmical activity going up and down, this is called alpha activity. This is a signature of the brain that's restful and alert. It's just humming to itself. The reason you see this in the back is that's the visual center. What's on the retina goes to the back of the brain. When your eyes are open, all this electrical activity is going back there. It's keeping the, the brain completely revved up. You close the eyes and that part of the brain can rest. And this is resting rhythm of the cortex. Notice in the front of the brain. The front of the brain is still quite active. It looks a lot like during eyes open. Because when you close the eyes, your mind is still going. This mental chatter is continuing to just grind away. So you can open your eyes and we'll start from the from an eyes open. So here's eyes open EEG. So now you can close your eyes, begin to meditate. What we see during transcendental meditation is we'll notice that this resting rhythm of the cortex is seen in the front here. This is this idea of transcending. The whole mind, the whole body goes through a, a state of restful alertness. There are many good examples, but we can start here. Notice again in the back we see this resting rhythm of the cortex. Also it's being seen here in the front. This is a process of of the whole mind, the whole body transcending. And we're just looking at two places on the brain, the front and the back. But if we had all 32 here, we would see this throughout the entire brain. We'll just continue to watch as Shane is meditating. See it coming up here. Now if Shane was doing mindfulness meditation, you wouldn't see this up here. In mindfulness meditation, it actually involves actively evaluating watching the situation and the frontal areas are quite active. Actually the measurement is called lateral asymmetry. If he was practicing Tibetan Buddhism, you would not see any alpha at all. It's a very strenuous concentration technique. You actually do it with eyes half open. And so with brain patterns now we can address the question that someone asked earlier, how is TM different from other meditations? The whole point that I want you to take home is that experience changes the brain. Meditation is an experience. You take the brain to a new state and by going back and forth you integrate that experience, that level of fullness, with the experience of whatever you're doing, waking, sleeping, dreaming. So much so that we can ask, what will your brain be like when you graduate? What's going to be the effect of college on your brain? Your knowledge is going to be obsolete in about five years.
It's just knowledge is changing so quickly. What you want to get is to structure those circuits that allow you to think clearly. So I'd like to leave you with one idea. This is the Wizard of Oz. Here we have the uh, Scarecrow. Do you remember what the Scarecrow wanted? Scarecrow, no, that's sorry, that's the Tin Man. Scarecrow wanted a brain. And you remember what he did? He, he braved being burned to death and the monkeys t took him off and tried to pull all the stuffing out. He did all that because he wanted a brain and he came and saw the Wizard of Oz. And what is the Wizard of Oz giving him? A piece of paper. So what my recommendation to you is don't be content with just getting a piece of paper from your college education. Thank you very much.